हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू क्रिएटिव मेडिसिन इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न अबाउट हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट अस नाउ लर्न सम इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स अबाउट द कमिटेंट स्क्विंट ओके सो इफ यू सी द इटियोलॉजी ऑफ कमिटेंट स्क्विंट कमिटेंट स्क्विंट इफ यू सी इटियोलॉजी इट मेनली अकर्स ड्यू टू द रिफ्रैक्टिव एरर in the refractive error especially we have two types of refractive error one we have hypermetropia and second we have myopia okay whenever there is hypermetropia remember whenever there is hypermetropia what happens so this is the normal eyeball okay okay we have two axes one we have visual axis second we have optic axis um visual axis and second we have anatomical axis okay what is anatomical axis the anatomical axis will pass from the center of the cornea so i'll draw a better picture so this is the cornea okay think that this is the cornea okay this is the lens okay this is the optic disc so there is an Uh, uh anatomical axis which passes through the center of cornea center of lens and the center of the retina or optic nerve so this is actually the anatomical axis then a little temporal to this we have the fovea okay one more axis is there which passes through the center of lens and then fovea and then to the object okay this is actually the visual axis okay the angle between the anatomical and visual axis is actually the kappa angle which is almost 23 degrees okay now whenever there is hypermetropia what happens whenever there is hypermetropia this eye will become smaller okay whenever the eye becomes smaller this will be moved yeah this visual axis will move a little towards the anatomical axis so as a result there is convergent squint so here there will be convergent squint okay whereas if there is myopia then there the in the myopia there is bigger eyeball and as a result this visual axis will be a little more away so here there will be divergent squint will be seen so in the hypermetropia you will see convergent squint whereas in myopia you will see divergent squint then one more thing which can result in squint is anisometropia because the refractive errors of both the eyes are different and has a result the two refractive errors so the eye the visual axis of the two eyes will be different and has a result obviously there will be committent squint okay next next whenever there is incorrect spectacle use for longer time whenever you use incorrect spectacle uh, for longer time that means uh, from the outside you are giving see this is the anatomical axis but now you are putting a spectacle from outside okay like this when you give a spectacle outside again the visual axis will not fall on fovea it will fall a little away from the fovea either uh, away or it can be either towards the fovea and as a result there can be either type of squint can be there and then whenever there is corneal opacities at the site of corneal opacities normally because the cornea is transparent the light the visual light can easily pass through the cornea but whenever there is corneal opacities the light cannot pass through through the cornea so the focus of the cornea of the light on the fovea does not occur properly so there won't be proper binocular vision and vision and fusion stereopsis will not occur properly and as a result this can cause concomitant squint then whenever there these opacities if they are present in the lens whenever there are lenticular opacities even then this visual axis will get deviated because the light which falls on the lens if the lens is clear the light easily passes through it through it but whenever the lens is opacified then the light will get have to get refracted because of increased refraction active index of the lens the i the, the this light will this uh, 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 this uh, feel this light will bend a little more than that what should be normally 
normal ha normally happen so as a result this will also result in committed squint then if the opacities are in the macula that is whenever there is macular diseases in the macular diseases though the light directly passes through the cornea through the clear lens but whenever it falls on the defective macula defective or diseased macula then the perception will not occur properly right binocular vision all that will not occur properly and as a result the macular disease will also result in uh, squint okay then in whenever there is optic atrophy okay in optic atrophy again there will be defect in the uh, defect in the optic disc optic um, disc and uh, and as a result here also there will be concomitant squint now what are the types of committed squint committed squint can be either they can be either esotropia they can be either esotropia or they can be either exotropia okay now if you see the esotropia esotropia we will see first esotropia can be of two types one it can be either accommodative esotropia or it can be non-accommodative esotropia so if you see accommodative esotropia this accommodative esotropia can again be here this accommodative esotropia it is associated with accommodation reflex that means if the esotropia occurs due to the any refractive errors where accommodation reflex is positive then that is accommodative if it is not associated with accommodation reflex if the esotropia is not associated with accommodation reflex then it is non accommodative esotropia normally any type of accommodation there will be convergence what is accommodation when you see the distant object and suddenly when you try to see the near object then your eyes will converge okay they will converge and they will constrict so this constriction and convergence together is called as accommodation now if this accommod if this esotropia is associated with accommodation reflex then that is accommodative squint if it is not associated then it is called as non accommodative squint now in the accommodative squint again if this is if this accommodative squint is due to the refractive error then it is refractive type what is refractive type that means here this uh, accommodative squint is mainly due to a refractive error okay then that is uh, refractive type then we also have non refractive type what is non refractive type here it is not due to refractive error but due to other reasons that means here the convergence is more important than the accommodation remember there is accommodative convergence if you see the ratio of accommodative convergence with accommodation this is high in non con non con non refractive type of accommodative squint then what about the non accommodative squint now this non accommodative squint is now again of two types non accommodative squint can be essential infantile that means if it occurs less than 6 months of age that is essential infantile second we have essential acquired if this occurs more than 6 months of age then that is essential acquired now these are the two important causes accommodative and non accommodative then we also have some other causes like we have in the esotropia itself now again in the esotropia itself there are two other causes which are called as secondary causes and we have consecutive causes in the secondary causes there is involvement of cataract or severe long ptosis can occur or here there can be involvement of retinoblastoma is seen or there can be optic atrophy okay similarly we also have consecutive causes now in the consecutive causes again we have number 1 there can be surgical over correction can be seen there can be surgical over correction of exotropia can occur in the consecutive causes so these are the types of esotropia that is accommodative esotropia non accommodative esotropia secondary causes and consecutive causes now we have exotropia now what do you see in exotropia exotropia is again of mainly the four types 
okay one two three four types so first in the first type we have con congenital exotrophia we have then we have primary exotrophia then we have secondary exotrophia and consecutive exotrophia primary exotrophia can be either intermittent exotrophia or it can be constant if it is intermittent it occurs most commonly in two to five years of age then if it is secondary exotrophia occurs due to cataract or it can occur due to optic atrophy or it can occur due to corneal opacities okay so exotrophia congenital exotrophia primary exotrophia secondary exotrophia and consecutive exotrophia this consecutive exotrophia is mainly due to the surgical over correction so this is about the exotrophia now how are you going to treat this manifest squint treatment of this manifest squint is first and foremost you will correct the refractive error if there is any refractive error you will have to correct the refractive error and then here one important thing is occlusion therapy can be done whenever there is amblyopia you can do occlusion therapy what is this occlusion therapy so in this you will um if this is the eye you will first cover the one eye um that is normal eye so this this is the normal eye and this is the abnormal eye or with squint so you are going to cover the normal eye when you cover the normal eye you are actually cover the normal eye you are actually forcing the squinted eye to see because the squinted eye tries to see because of the covering of the normal eye the um squint will start adjusting okay now there is one rule for occlusion what is the rule of occlusion so in the occlusion therapy if you see the rule of occlusion is you will have to have x is to 1 what is x is to 1 x what is x here x is equal to age in years according to the age of the baby those many days you should occlude the normal eye age in years that is equal to occlusion of the normal eye that means for example if you are doing this occlusion therapy in a one year old that means the rule of occlusion is one is to one that means you will keep the normal eye what is one here one is one day you should put the normal eye open okay normal eye is kept open for one day and abnormal eye is also kept open for one day if the child is one year if the child is two years of age abnormal or squinted eye is kept open for two days and normal eye is kept open for only one day if there is the child is three years then abnormal eye is kept open for three days whereas normal eye is kept open for one day so like this you should see okay now so in if, if one day not just normal eye but even abnormal eye is open that means both the eyes are open in one day whereas the abnormal eye is only open for one day okay that is the thing now this amblyopia will only be corrected it is actually corrected only till uh, five to six years of age after five to six years of age even if you try to do amblyopic this occlusion therapy it will not work it become permanent then third we can do orthotopic you can teach the patient orthotopic exercises or you can either use synapto 4 can be used for doing the orthotopic exercises then fourth you can do surgery same either recession surgery or you can also do resection surgery based on the type of the uh, uh, based on the type of the squint you can do this and you can use prism therapy can also be given okay prism therapy can be given for remaining correction even after the surgery if there is any remaining or residual residual error is see then you can do this prism um, correction can be done so this is about the manifest squint thank you thank you and thank you for watching